Yo, what's going on? Today's video, I got the how to make a punch barrage ability commonly found in battleground, Battlegrounds games. Speaking of Battlegrounds game, I ran into two people who knew me, like knew my videos and stuff like that. They were, like there was like AO, Spider, like your videos and stuff. So just letting y'all know, if y'all ever went into me, if y'all ever seen my name in games, you know, Spider 19, for sure make sure to say what's up. I'm gonna say what's up back. We could chill. Y'all, y'all definitely will find me playing like Sorcerer's Battleground. The strongest battlegrounds that's really what i've been playing the last couple days it's really social battleground and stuff but if y'all ever seen me say what's up but yeah let's go ahead and get straight to the video okay so first things first of course let's get a sound effect you know like a punch sound you get that from the toolbox is what my sounds like right then we can insert air motive into okay we can insert air motive into replicated storage right we can rename set remote event combat event right then let's insert a rig so we so we have a rig to test the the uh say ability or no, not really an ability combo i guess or punch or whatever to call it right so let's click rig builder block avatar i'm gonna go with r6 because um my knockback animation is R6, so let me see. Okay, so it's facing the right direction. Perfect. Then I'm going to insert a local script. I'm going to open up starter player, then insert a local script into starter player scripts. We're going to rename said local script combat script and in parentheses put local. Right? We're going to delete print hello world. We're going to create two variables. First, let's get the user input service. So we're going to say local UIS is equal to game get service user input service. Then I'm going to create a variable for the combat remote event. So let's say local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event. Then I'm going to set up a user input service function. I'm going to say UIS dot input began connect function in parentheses put input comma processed. Enter. We're gonna say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not process pretty much means the player is not typing in chat. Enter. You're then gonna say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code. You guys know I would go with E, but you guys can go whatever keybind you want. Enter. We're gonna say combat event fire server in quotation marks the name of the event. We're going to name it punch barrage right then i'm going to close the local script we can insert a server script into server script service we can rename said script combat script and in parentheses put server boom then as you guys know i have all my animation stuff simply insert an animation into the script rename said animation the animation id in there and boom you're good to go so for this you're going to need a left a left punch right punch and a knockback and well the knockback is optional but it looks better when you have a knockback animation and stuff um like I, people people like i say it in a lot of my videos but people i guess still ask and stuff no i do not make these animations i get them all from the toolbox just go to the toolbox search up combat animations punch animations whatever and you'll find them so if i didn't make any of these and stuff a lot of people ask me like with animation stuff like i don't think people understand i've been using these same animations for months like i honestly have no idea like where i i don't really remember where i got them from and stuff but yeah let's go ahead let me just okay i'm good so let's go ahead and get straight into the server script so we can so once you have our animations in there make sure you name them accordingly right put them inside the script and then boom we're good to go so let's delete print hello world right and we're going to create a couple variables we need to get a couple services first let's get the sound service for our punch sound effect so let's say local ss is equal to game get service sound service then let's get the twin service local ts is equal to wait actually I don't think that we don't need the twin server. Sorry, forget that. We need the debris server still. So, so let's say. Damn, I need the idea. Never mind. All right, my fault, guys. We're gonna get the combat mode event. Sorry, we're gonna say local combat event. Like I was trying to do stuff with like the twin service and the debris server, and then I just I, I just scrapped the idea. I was just like, nah, never mind. So we're gonna say it's equal to game. They're replicated storage. Wait for child combat event. And then I'll set up the function. Let's say combat event dot on server event. Connect function in parentheses, put PLR short for the player, comma, event type, enter. Then we're going to create a variable, a variable for the player's character. Let's say local character is equal to player dot character. Then we're going to say if event type, remember the name of the event is punch barrage, enter, right? So I just want to clarify something. This video is meant to demonstrate the punch barrage ability. It includes like damage and stuff. Um, but if you want to see things like how to make m1 knockback, knockback cooldown and stuff like that I have other videos that specifically talk about that in case anybody was wondering about that but let's go ahead and create a variable for the enemy character we're going to say local enemy character just to help you distinguish between you know the character that's attacking and then the enemy character that should be getting damaged right so we're not going to assign it a value as of yet we're going to use a for loop we're going to say for our comma v impairs workspace get children enter you're going to say if v fine sorry not wait for child Find first child humanoid, so it's either an NPC or a player. And v dot name is nearly to player name, so of course it's like we're not, it's not you know players and damaging themselves. 
and we need to take the distance. So we're going to say in parentheses character dot humanoid root part dot position minus enemy character dot humanoid. Oh, sorry, sorry, not enemy character. Sorry, we haven't assigned a value yet. So v dot humanoid root part dot position go on the outside of those parentheses and put dot magnitude is less than so here's here's where you put your range value i'm going with five five looks good for me but it's up to you guys you can adjust this value to your liking then enter you're going to say enemy character is equal to v you know the instance so you now have assigned it a value then we're going to make it so the enemy character can't walk or jump so we're going to say enemy character that humanoid dot walk speed is equal to zero enemy character dot humanoid dot jump power is equal to zero right then we're going to go on the outside of the fire loop skip a line and then we're going to do the same thing to the character so you guys can really copy and paste this you could just control c control v and then just change this to character and character boom right now once we've done that we can go ahead and set up the fire loop so we're going to say four i is equal to one comma six Sorry, six one. So I just want to explain how this works. So you guys know a for our loop, it loops, you know. So it's gonna go one. It's gonna like this is your starting value. Here's where it ends, and this is like the increment it, it increases by. So we're gonna say so it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So if you want your combos to be a lot like last longer and stuff, increase the middle number. If you want it to be shorter, decrease it. But I'd recommend you to have this number set as an equal as a equal number. You know, an equal number. I'd I hope to God that everyone watching this video knows the difference between an equal and odd number and stuff. I'm just hope for the best, right? So you guys are about to see why, like why I'm saying that. So we're gonna. So the way we're gonna tell whether or not to um play which animation, because you guys know we have three. Of course, knockback applies to the enemy. We need to know if we're playing the left or right animation. So we're gonna do. You guys don't have to do it necessarily like this, but it has to somewhat be like this. You need a type of system. So for um. I'm trying to think for even wait wait no i'm tripping oh no, no sorry for odd numbers um we're going to do left punch for even numbers it'll be right punch right so we're gonna say if i is equal to one or i is equal to three or i is equal to five enter right so say if you're so say if like you went up to like 10 then you would need to keep going you, you will need to add like is equal to seven then nine and so forth or say if you were only going to three then you could delete or i equals five and then just have one and three and stuff right so yeah that's just how that's how it's supposed to work then we're going to set the animation track for the player we're going to say local at is equal to character dot humanoid load animation right then we're going to say script regular brackets quotation marks you're going to get the left punch animation and then you're going to say at play boom then you're going to go on you're going to uh Oh, sorry, not not do that. Actually, sorry. You're gonna go after the 18. And you're gonna say else if I, right, is equal to two or I is equal to four or I is equal to six, right? You're gonna say enter. You can copy and paste this, so you could just control C, control V, and then you're just gonna change this to right punch animation, right? And then we're done with that if statement. So you guys can really just go right after it, and then you can play the sound effect. You can say SS dot punch play boom we're gonna play the sound effect then we're gonna use an if statement to check to make sure that there's an enemy character if there is an enemy character um the way i want to do it is i want to do it uh the attack where it's like instead of the player just like taking all the punches and then at the, and then like at the last punch they're gonna do they're gonna be damaged i want them to take minimal amounts of damage like three they're gonna take uh three they're gonna like every time they get hit they're gonna take uh damage by the house gonna go down by three but you guys could do it differently though this is how i'm doing it so i'm gonna set up the animation track again so paste it and they're gonna say a2 a2 then this time you're going to change this to the knockback animation and then this time we want to change it to the enemy character so that the enemy character is the one you know getting knocked back and then we're going to say if, and like i said if you want you guys want to see how to integrate the actual knockback like for the final one you can go watch my video on knockback so then we can say enemy character uh dot humanoid dot health is is less than equal to three right just keep in mind this is like it's going to damage them every single time so obviously you'd want it to be a small value you wouldn't want it to be like 20 or something and then you just kill the player and stuff right or npc then you're going to go after the end and then we're going to put a task that way test that way 0 0.5 you're going to need to adjust this value based on how long your animation is and stuff i find that this time works good for my um animations and stuff right depends on the duration of yours so we're going to add an if statement after we're going to say if i is equal to six so this needs to match whatever the mil middle value is here because this means this is the final one so this is how you know the last punch so at the end of everything you're going to then pretty much just return everyone's uh 
walk speed and jump power to what it was originally. So you're just gonna control or sorry, you yeah, actually control C, control V. So you're gonna do this, you wanna do character, right? You wanna do this character, so this will be 16 and 50. And then you wanna add another if statement inside. You wanna say if enemy character, boom, just another double check to make sure that there is an enemy character so we can avoid any issues. So boom, 16 and 50. And just like that, we are done. Let's go ahead and test to make sure it works. As always, if you guys want access to any of my channel, I mean to any of my uh if you guys want access to any of my scripts or files, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Shout out to all the people who joined my channel. Remember, it's like four, it's like four people that joined like in the last two, three days, I think. And then someone just joined the Discord server like 20 minutes ago. They just joined the channel member. Shout out to all y'all. I appreciate it, man. But anyway, let's go ahead. So we need to be close enough. So if I press E, boom, boom, boom. You guys see my animations are playing. They're getting the, you know you see the knife animation playing every time they're slowly taking damage each time right so uh, if i press e you, i'm pretty sure you guys can hear i can't move and stuff right now if i try to press now if i try to press e right like this right obviously we're not doing any damage because we're far like the end like the attack is going to still play but obviously we're not doing any damage we have to be within you see you have to be like close we have to be like really close to the player or npc whatever and stuff right but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys want me to do a part two of this then for sure I got challenge stuff just let me know in the comments leave a like on the video subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys next video thank you for watching